the age of broken video games. I think the first thing that comes to mind when I think of the PS4 and Xbox One era is all of the games that released in just a totally busted state. Don't get me wrong, broken games have existed since long before the PS4 and Expo. And, uh, shout out Superman 64. H Hi Clark, how are you? Good to see you. Haven't seen you since college when you lasered that professor. But there definitely weren't nearly as many big budget AAA busters. You know, big rigs is barely comprehensible, but that game was made by one man in a pond, not a giant triple-A Megatron. Back in the prehistoric days of the Xbox 360 Back in 2007, PS3, yeah. Downloading an update to fix issues or add stuff to your disc-based yep. game after its release was like a fairly new concept, but like- No, it was a pretty new thing. Like most things would get shipped and they worked. Because back then, you got to remember, like in 2007, this sounds nuts, but not everybody had the internet. There were people still living in the Stone Ages. They're like washing their uh, their clothes with like one of those little things you like put it on the water and, you know, pumping their own water from a well. And they come home and they watch television with no fucking internet. An actually pretty cool concept. Wait, so the interweb can make my already legendary game even more yep. legendary by Imagine downloading that. this epic Chuck Norris update? <laughs> That's pretty like a boss. I see no way this could ever end badly for the consumer. It is 2007. I just saw Michael Clayton. But nowadays, the disc inside that case you just bought is practically dead oh. weight the second you've installed the game and downloaded the likely... Well, the disc is what you buy, and then you download the game. Yeah, and, and the game doesn't really release for like two and a half more weeks after they iron out all the bugs that they couldn't fix because they fired the QA team. So that's your job now and you paid $70 to do it. Necessary giant update full of fixes not included on the disc. Because right. the disc was actually manufactured months prior to the game's set release date and the developers kept working on stuff during that time, likely because the publisher set the release date way too early and were just like, it's fine, everyone has the internet, you'll fix it in time, just never stop working. You don't have to see your family. Your family is dumb. Your family yeah, you'll be ready, You'll be. the game will be ready. All you have to do is work 90 hours a week. That's all. You just do that for two months, and then it's going to be fine. Literally the cringiest idiots I've ever seen. Why do you want to go home to them? Ooh, goofy. Yeah. Your family? L. The disc may as well just be a doctor's note that tells your PS4, yes, my son actually does own the yeah. game now. Go ahead and give him the necessary day one flu shot. Oh my god. I cannot fucking believe that this guy compared buying a video game nowadays to a fucking doctor's note to say that you went to buy the game. I cannot fucking believe that. But the worst part about it is that it works perfectly. It does. It's, it's completely Fallout 76 perfect. didn't even actually come with a disc, so you actually just got a cool new blue coaster for your. I hate that, bro. Like whenever you buy a, it's like a jewel case for a, a game, and then you open it up, and it's just a piece of fucking paper, and it's a link to a website to download it on with a, a a download code or some shit like back in the day we bought world of warcraft and there were five fucking discs in that box burning crusade there were four Reddit dungeon. Basically, if you don't have internet access nowadays as a gamer, you're screwed. But my goal yeah. with this video isn't just to be like, wow, well, things used to be better back in the day and now they're all bad, grr, because it's not that simple or true. Yeah. Big budget, broken video games exist for a lot of reasons. The first one being making video games is just really, really hard. I, have well, I think it's gotten harder now because also you have way more people that discover bugs inside of games and there are probably people that that if they didn't watch a bunch of bad like content about a game they probably would have gone into the game and enjoyed it more i absolutely think that people on youtube and people online now they'll go and they dislike games and they enjoy games less because they watch like 18 different criticisms and breakdowns of the game. And it's like they're like oh i thought this game was bad or they're saying it's bad that means it's fucking bad yeah, they're hate farming, exactly. So, yeah, I think that 
I, I think that a lot of the games that come out that are problematic, yeah, they're bad, like for sure. But I think it's like a force multiplier with how many times like you've got videos out there talking about how bad they are and showing about every single way that they're bad. Because the truth is with a lot of these bugs, it, 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 it looks bad whenever you isolate it. And it is bad. It, it, it's bad. But there are a lot of people that will never even encounter this bug. It only happens whenever you're using this item at this place and you never use this item at this place, so it just never happened. But people will still see that and think, oh, game's bugged. Openly critical of many big budget AAA games on this channel, but yeah. I hope that I have always made one thing very Crystal Pepsi clear. A lot of very talented people work very hard for uh, very- Bro, like you have Crystal Pepsi, like that shit was brown. The soda was it was a nice golden brown and then you turn it white bro that's something wrong that's not natural that's not normal long crunchy nature valley hours to make even seemingly simple stuff like this possible and yeah. it's crazy and in order for it to be even considered pretty good by the general public oh my god is this happening to me again Oh my fucking god, bro, like... Alright, let's watch it. Openly critical of many big budget AAA games on this channel, but I hope that I have always made one thing very Crystal Pepsi clear. A lot of very talented people work very hard for very long, crunchy Nature Valley hours I have to make even seemingly simple stuff like this possible, and it's crazy. And in order for a game to be even considered pretty good by the general public, gameplay, sound, story, characters, performance, all of these things have to perfectly align in the in the nights in the gamer night sky. Obviously, modern technology. Has yeah, I mean, as long as the gameplay is good, I'm happy. Like everything else is all like that's all fucking sprinkles on the cupcake. If the story's good, great. If the graphics are good, great. Does the gameplay like shit? Oh. <laughs> If the answer to that is no, we're not doing it. Made creating virtual worlds a lot easier than it was back in the 80s or 90s. Oh, and no I think doubt. we often take that for granted. We've come a long way from the days where 3D was a bit more of a fluid abstract concept like jazz and you aimed a gun with the same finger you drove James Bond with. Yeah, it was Teamwork weird. lights you up. Bro, why With am I getting up, ads? Many hands coordinate across many different types of teams. But I can't believe Keeping I'm getting ads, tasks, bro. Like, how am I getting ads? Bro, I'm so sick of this. How, how do I, what do I download? Is it uBlock Origin? Nah, nah, because it says this. I think the first thing that comes to mind when I think of the PS3D was a bit more of a Let's fluid Let's see if it's going to work. Abstract concept like jazz, and you aimed a gun with the same finger you drove James Bond with. But with better tools and better hardware comes bigger projects, okay. with bigger budgets, with bigger teams, with bigger lists of bigger problems that your big ass better fix with your big tractor. And if you've ever been hanging out with a big group, you know that even doing something as simple as deciding where to go for dinner can quickly become a f***ing boss fight. Especially when you're- I don't know why people are like this. Friend's mom who's paying for the dinner has all these crappy dinner demands. Yeah. She's trying to satisfy her dinner shareholders. This metaphor is getting a little goofy. I, think I fucking hate this. People that always try to make eating food complicated. I There's nothing I hate more than that. Oh, it makes me so mad. At the point, I know half of you are just thinking about Michael Clayton still. So I think the first obvious reason the AAA me is off. releasing in a broken state is that game development is just insanely hard and requires yes, so much is. dedicated Absolutely. collaboration and efficient time of management. Course. And it's a miracle yes. that any video game ever gets finished and is even exists at all. And all video games should go to heaven. The second reason is. 
That's true. Yeah. Okay, buddy, that's enough out of you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jakey. Jakey. And Jakey. Attorney's Outlaw. And I'm here to tell you about today's video sponsor, PayPal Honey. Honey is a free online shopping tool that automatically searches for promo codes at checkout, like a little deal detective, so that you don't have to. Honey works for so many things. Things that you're probably no, this, already No, this ad's a fine, because it's like, at least he's getting paid for it, not you're probably Google. already shopping on. And did I mention that it's completely free? Hey, no objections over here. Sustained <laughs> and overruled. Shit. Anytime you see your little dancing detective up here, mm -hmm. just click apply coupons and let little shorty do his thing and try to save you some money. Dang! I recently needed a new lawyer briefcase because my previous one was covered in so much mud for reasons I'm not at liberty to say. So naturally, I looked online for a cute new backpack that I could take into the courtroom, and Honey found a coupon. Let's go right then, God! Whether you use Google Chrome, I didn't even know you could use coupons on the internet. You can do that? Oh, a promo code. Yeah, yeah, a promo. But is that a coupon? Like, I mean, I guess, yeah. I mean, damn, Pro I never thought Firefox, that. Safari, or for whatever reason, Microsoft Edge, you can add Honey to your browser for free by going to joinhoney.com forward slash Jake. Using my special link helps the channel and is greatly appreciated by all of the attorneys here at Jakey, Jakey, and Jakey, and Jakey, and Jakey, and Jakey, and Jakey. Thank you to Honey for sponsoring. Well, I probably just used some random, like, you know, fucking attorneys in suits. And he just fucking searches it up on Google and it's like the first result is like, yeah, we're going to use that one. During this video and now let's get on back to this episode of Nabo Jabo in the age of Michael Clayton. As most of you in the audience know, new video games sell around $60 or I guess now $70 on PS5 and yeah, that's Xbox right. Series that's S. That's right, it's going to be $80 X. soon. Why the did they call them that? And it's been around it's that such a 50 to $60 name. price point for a while, even yep. though AAA games take way longer to make now and have way oh, bigger yeah. budgets than back in the day when I was star quarterback. So because of all that, and also inflation, in some cases, yeah. it's kind of- I see, this is this was bad, huh? Like, damn, look at that. That sucks, huh? What the fuck? Damn, well, I guess wages went up by that same amount though, so it's okay steal to get a game like Elden Ring for only yeah. 60 bucks when Eternal Ring was 50 bucks 23 years ago. Uh -huh. And the swords in that game are tiny. They're not nearly as girthy or as long as Elden Ring. You go, in, you go out in public with that shrinking ink? I'll kick your ass! Donkey Damn, Online has a really good video about video game pricing that you should go watch later, but not uh -huh. right now. If you leave, you won't see how I learned how to spin. I'm gonna spin later. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna want to see that. So if you're a company whose main priority at the end of the day is just to generate as much profit as humanly possible. Yeah, I've heard of that. Why not cut a few corners, you know? Assuming that your reputation isn't all that important to you. Because well, it's or, like, you've got to keep in mind, right? It's like a lot of companies, their reputation is already in the shitter. So it's like if EA brings out a game and there's no bugs in it, no one's going to care. But at the same time, if EA brings out a game and it's bugged out, it's fucked up, also nobody's going to care. <laughs> because it's EA, what do you expect? It's a choice between A, spending millions of dollars for every month that you lengthen yep. development time to ensure that you release a relatively bug-free and finished product, uh -huh. and hope it eventually pays off because lots of people recognize that it's good quality oh, and sure. buy it yep. and sing your praises and you win awards at the oh, big wow. show and Jeff wow. goes, oh man, your game is so big. Such it's a the good biggest game. game I've ever seen. Ooh. Which is all a very big gamble. Or B, yeah. set a very unrealistic release date that uh -huh. you know damn well you will not make and yeah. force your team to crunch their asses off only to still release a broken game that you'll maybe eventually fix with a giant Ooh. update long after release and after you've already made all your money. And to make Make sure you definitely yeah. see a return on your giant investment and satisfy your investors. You do all these pre-order bonuses and fancy- Oh, pre-orders. Look at that. Like, bro, this is gaming. Guys, who's excited about gaming? Here, let me let me go back. Oh, look at that. Pre-order bonus. Badges. Selling out fast. Postcards. Original score. Art book. Wallpapers. Oh, my God. 
take my money. This is the way these games are now, man. And fancy trailers with celebrities just to guarantee that people buy your game before gamers can even know that the game is busted as hell because you've nope. also made it so that no publication can drop a review for the game until the day the game comes out, which should be illegal. Yeah, if the only thing you care about is sales in your quarterly reports, you're definitely planting at bomb site. Yeah, we're on the B. B. Just like Ubisoft and EA and Bethesda uh -huh. and Square Enix yeah. and Activision uh -huh. and CD Projekt Red and Microsoft. Yeah like several times. You very rarely yeah. see Sony or Nintendo or Rockstar publish a big broken unfinished mess because they know that their reputation is a big reason people purchase games that have their cute little sexy logos in the corner. The That's right, because like they, but like after your reputation is fucked, well then it's like, okay, well at this point, I mean, you might as well have some fun with it. Yeah, just like don't even test the shit. Just put it out there. They, I mean, they already pre-ordered, right? Yeah, all right, yeah, it's good. It's good, we fix it later. <laughs> we'll do it live. Part two, Ghost of Tsushima, Spider-Man, God of War, all of these Sony exclusives released in relatively bug-free and complete states. And, well, Days Gone was iffy, but we don't have to talk about Days Gone. Yeah, I, I, I said your name. Never played this one. Go back to bed, okay? Doesn't mean that those devs didn't have to crunch like hell to reach the finish line. No, unfortunately, crunch is a huge problem across the entire industry. And even Golden Girl publishers and developers like Sony and Naughty Dog aren't exceptions to that. It's still very much not ideal. But apparently, even Golden Girls like Nintendo or Rockstar, companies with some of the highest rated games of all time under their championship belt, they push site B too! It's B! Rush B! Rotate B! Rotate B! The GTA Definitive Trilogy was one of the most appalling and disappointing re-releases of a beloved franchise <laughs> that the world has ever seen. Appalling and disappointing re-releases of a beloved franchise that the world has ever seen. And this is Rockstar, the company oh. that put out this game, and this game, and this game, and this game. And fuck it, even oh this game God. is amazing. And you know money isn't tight with how much of a cash cow GTA 5 continues yeah. to be 10 years later. Like, this isn't an indie publisher rushing out Hog Simulator 3 because they're strapped for cash after their Kickstarter failed. No, this is Rockstar. They, it's just I feel like Hog Simulator, I feel like that'd be a good game. Yeah, that'd actually be probably fun. <laughs> Agree. I don't Hulk know if simulated it's dragon flight or their parent company take two but at some point someone or someone's somewhere said it we'll, we'll do, do it live and yep, Nintendo there we go. they just published the two Jack lowest rated thinking. mainline Pokemon games to ever exist games now famous well, because it's like people at this point man everybody's gonna buy the new Pokemon game like if you're gonna buy a new Pokemon game a review ain't gonna stop you like you've probably been buying Pokemon games for 10 years. So you just push that shit out there and it's all kinds of fucked up. I mean, look, it's not your problem. You stop buying them? Yeah, but you probably stopped buying them because you went to fucking high school or middle school. You grew out of Pokemon. You probably didn't stop buying them because they were bugged out. Yeah, I stopped buying them too. Because I got too old to get into Pokemon for their hilarious bugs and I ain't talking about Caterpie and even if there's a fun game buried underneath all the bugs it should be illegal to advertise yep. and sell a product in this state and that brings me to my final reason that I think broken AAA sure games that's will gonna continue happen. to exist you I touched on this in yeah. my ads and video games video yeah, but because people don't give a fuck and like they, they will always go and the thing is you buy a video game and then the game is fucked up and then, because you bought the video game, if you acknowledge that the game is fucked up, you acknowledge that you are stupid. Because you bought the fucking game. You bought the bad game, you fucking idiot. You dumb bitch. And so, you're going to go online, and you're going to be like, Well, look, I mean, it, it doesn't have that many bugs. You just have to, for the mission four, you have to only look at the crown. Because if you look at any of the cars in the mission, the game crashes. But the thing is, also, it makes it more of a challenge, because you have to memorize the floor patterns and walk in the right way. So, there's always people that make excuses for why these games are okay whenever they're obviously fucking garbage. Absolutely. And it's people don't want to feel stupid for buying a game like this.
But oh my god, stop pre-ordering games. That's why these companies keep promising to serve you hot lunch square pizza and then go straight That's to That's never gonna happen. Because they know the average consumer is gullible as hell and overly trusting and super loyal to their- No, they're not gullible as hell or super trusting. They just want game. Bill want game. Bill buy game. Game bad. Bill mad. That's it. And then you bring out the new trailer. And Bill's like, oh, it's going to be different this time. I just know it. And you're right back to square one. It doesn't even matter. It just keeps happening. Favorite thing, and they prey on those sensibilities to make sure that your money ends up in their pocket. Yeah. And it does. Every single time. Every Pokemon time. was busted as hell and still sold 20 million copies. Every it's like time. serious gamer Stockholm syndrome. Just where give up. Just give up. Listen, just be happy that they're still releasing video games, okay? And they're not just asking the people to just give them money. Just be happy that you're still getting. You're still getting some form of a game. People will watch a pre-release yeah. review for a game like Dying Light 2 on IGN or GameSpot and defend the game like their f***ing life depends on yes. it. Yes! Even though they haven't even played it yet. Okay, guys. Yes, because they've already convinced themselves that it's going to be good. The thing is, there's one thing that people hate. Being wrong. And the thing is that if you're on the internet and you're wrong, you can ride that ship down to the bottom of the ocean and nothing can do and nobody can do anything about it. That's the truth. <laughs> they gulp themselves to death. Yeah, exactly. And you can never say that. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong with that? Yeah, they hate to be wrong. And the fact is that people that do stuff like this, absolutely, that's how they are. And they're going to make excuses for games because they've already told themselves it's going to be good. So if they hear news about the game being bad, well, now they have to reorient their whole mind. Now, their opinion is wrong. And that's, that's obviously not true. So it's got to be like a rigged review. It's like only a bug on PlayStation and it doesn't happen on PC. <laughs> or like, oh, well, you're just looking, you're nitpicking or, oh, that never happened to me or something like that. Yeah, that's just how it is. Oh, I thought I played it. But remember, this is without the day one patch, and we all know those yeah. usually fix everything. <laughs> you course. can't spell ignorant without IGN or ants. And even yeah, months true. after the damage is done and a broken product has sold millions of copies because apparently gamers have toasters for brains, people in the comments will once again applaud and defend companies like EA or CD yeah. Projekt Red for sticking with their game and fixing it long after release, which it's like, I guess that deserves some level of praise, maybe? You know what I mean? It's like well, it's you buy better a taco that, that, that the they did price, that than you nothing. advertised a full taco on the fucking taco screen. And when you get that taco, you open up the greasy paper just to see a busted ass half taco nah, shell. Nah, because I've got this before though. Like this has happened to me. Like the other day I went to Taco Bell and they put onions in my shit. And like I bet I could have gone back and, and they would have given me something new. But maybe not. Maybe they just said I ordered it that way and they're not going to do it. With only beans on uh, I hate only onions. beans. Oops, all beans. And then six months later, a Taco Bell employee rings your doorbell yeah. and gives you the other half of that busted taco that still doesn't have all the meat on it that they promised. And your response is to start clapping? Like, <laughs> what the f And don't get me wrong, definitely throw love to the hardworking individual devs that actually got in the crunchy taco shell trenches and coated yeah. this broken mess back together. Oh, but yeah. Zero fing credit to the shitty overlord Taco Bell EA Corporation responsible for that broken taco that you paid full price for in the first place. God damn it. I think I that most people that make games probably don't want to release a game that's borked. I don't think anybody does. It's just that sometimes you either have people that don't know what the hell they're doing or you have people that make deadlines that don't know what the hell they're doing. And guess what you get? Well, you get a borked game. That's it.
They need a taco or at least a, a churro to the throat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God. A lot of initially broken games can eventually blossom into really good ones like No Man's Sky, Master Chief Collection. Final Fantasy XIV was like completely reborn, pun intended. And yep. People love it now they did and that's that. awesome. But this cycle will repeat as long as gamers continue to buy games and pre-order games before even knowing if it runs as well as the pudding on their treadmill. Yeah, but I bought the last game and the last game was good whenever I got it. And so this one is gonna be good. And if I buy it, if I pre-order it now, and I get the deluxe edition, I can play it early, which is good because the early date is on Friday and I don't work on Friday. I'll get Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I can play the game three days. But if I wait, then it's gonna be out on Wednesday and then I gotta work and I'm not gonna be able to play. Oh man. So I kinda had to do it. <laughs> and that's a <laughs> that's it. Like I think that there is it's over. It's just simply over. You're never going to convince gamers not to pre-order. You're never going to stop them from buying microtransactions. It's just not going to happen. You're on this train and you are not the conductor. You are along for the ride. Only possible change starts with you and what you choose to spend your money on. Otherwise, we're just going to keep getting anthems shoved into our ant holes. But you know what they say, you can't spell Nakey Jakey without Jane mm -hmm. or, Ke or Kevin. I'm going to start uploading more stuff to Jaquan the Jequel, so if you want to go subscribe to my twin, you can get some indie slop in between my AAA That's prestige. That's good, bro. Like, that's got some strong fucking 2000s energy. Like, literally, like the year 2000. This guy would be so cool. He would be so cool, man. Thank you to Honey and Jakey Jakey and Jakey Attorneys at Law for sponsoring this video. Get at me on Instagram or Twitter or don't. I can't enforce that as I am not your legal guardian. And I'll see you next time on The Game Wars. It's good to be back. I'm excited. I'm, I got more videos in the, in the works. I don't know why I always get more candid and sincere right at the end. But anyways, it's good to be back. Gamers forever. <laughs> yeah, gamers forever, guys. Gamers forever, and even before forever, because we pre-ordered, huh? Isn't that awesome? Pre-ordering video games. Paying for a game that's not out yet. Based off of a review, based off of a version of the game that's not the game you're going to get that you already paid for. That's it. It's over. And speak for yourself, I never pre-order. Who cares what you do? Who gives a shit? Over a million people hit level 20 in the first weekend of the Diablo 4 beta. That's just the truth. The masses have spoken. And they're voting with their dollars, and you ain't voting at all. What about pre-ordering already established games like WoW? Bro, buy whatever you want. I'm not going to tell you what the fuck to do. The thing I want me to go like, oh, this is what you need to do. You can't do this. You got to do that, bitch. I do whatever the fuck you want. If you want it, Biden ruined pre-orders. No, he didn't. I wish he did. But no, he did not. Let's see here. It is what it is. Yeah, watch the PoE 2 and 9 minutes video. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll watch that. Yeah, let me link you guys this video. This shit is funny. I feel like it, it's like everybody has just kind of come to this point now where, like, we just need to accept that, I mean, the game is not going to be getting that much better. It, it is what it is now, and it ain't going to change. This is just this is just how it is. It deal with it. Yeah, you just got to live with it. Yeah, that's it. We lost, they won. They going to buy the new well, bro, whenever the new Pokémon game comes out, they going to buy it. Why is that? Because they grew up playing Pokémon. That's it. It's got nothing to fucking do with, oh, well, it, it, it's because of the quality of the game and then, uh, 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 they, because, because the Charizard is really cool. And that's it.
Yeah, the new Zelda game. Yeah, it, it's that simple. There, I, I'll link you guys. This, this is a good video. I, I really appreciate this dude, man. Like, I really do. Jakey's like the one cousin that you like, but you can't see till Christmas. Whenever you see him, you're entertained for the time he's there. Thank you, Jakey. That's cute. I like that. That's really nice. Yeah, I never heard Michael Clayton until 10 minutes ago. I don't know who that is. Uh, I actually don't. Man, thank you for making the distinction between developers and publishers. Yeah, I mean, like, but nobody really gives a fuck. Like, basically, if you work on a game, if, if you are on the Q8, if you are on the social media team for a game, if that game gets released and it's fucked up, that's you. You did that. That's your fault. You fucked the game up. I knew it. That's it. Like, it, it, there, there's no, like, it, people not going to think. Like, you can't expect people to think. That's too much work.